three or four times I've tried this. This has never worked. Um, but what has stayed consistent is, yes, once again, I left my Bible at home. But I did remember my notes. But that's okay. You only have to remember one verse. I didn't have them put it up there. I figure you could remember it. And you only have to remember a third of a verse. In the beginning, God. We'll stop right there. That's all you have to remember. You see, our faith begins and ends with the notion that God exists. He created us and he provided a way for us to live. And, I, and just for accuracy, I double check. 90% of people in America believe in God in some way, shape, or form. Now, this per particular article said, well, that means 10% are atheists. No, not necessarily. There's atheists and there's agnostic, and agnostics say, well, I just don't know. But they sort of live like atheists, so I'll give them that. Worldwide, it's less. 50 even one God, another 35% believe in multiple gods. So there's still a pretty high percentage worldwide. The problem is, what is God like? Now there's some fallacies going around. People treat God like he's some magic genie. I pray for something, he just, poof, gives me what I want. Well, some of us have experienced where you get that prayer and God says no. He doesn't necessarily give us what he wants, what we want. He gives us what we need, and that's a whole other equation. Some see God as this Jovial Santa Claus type person. He's just here to give, 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 give. He doesn't want anything to bad, bad to happen to us. He, he's just always happy all the time. Okay. Some see God as that doting old grandfather that never sees anything wrong in their grandchildren. And whenever you go visit, Grandpa, there's always a quarter in the pocket or Grandma has fresh-baked cookies on the counter or something. I remember when I was a kid, if I made a mistake, I generally would have to account for it. When my nieces and nephews and even my own daughter would make a mistake, my father had softened quite a bit and said, that's okay, that's why God sent Jesus. Well, where was this attitude when you were spanking my behind? You know, there's just, seemed like a double standard. But it brought to mind this phrase I've seen a couple times, if you raise your children, you can spoil your grandkids, and if you spoil your ch children, you have to raise your grandkids. Dad wasn't so stupid after all. He had earned that right. And some, and I think a lot of people are like this, see God as this just extra picky drill sergeant or store manager or something that is just looking for you to make a mistake so he can zap you. Well, that's not fair either. I've had friends who will say stuff, at, and I'll say, well, I'm going to move over here in case that lightning bolt comes down. And I want to be out of range. Now, to be fair, I've got sixth grade students who do that too, and I kind of take a step to the side. None of those are healthy. And as so often happens, I didn't plan it. Ray picked the songs in that last little segment we sang, had some names of God in it. 
Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Shammah, my healer. And sometimes people who have trouble with God have more trouble with what they thought God should be like because God is not in their mind what he should be like because God is who he is. And I didn't bring it, but I borrowed a book from the book table. Praying through the names of God. And I thought, that's interesting. I thought, oh, I'd always been told there's like eight or nine. Seventy-five different names of God in this book. And I start, and it's just you say, this is the name, and these are different prayers you can pray associated with that name. Sort of a devotional thing. You remember the time, of course you don't because you weren't alive, but if you've read the story, Paul says, I can be all things to all people. Or I try to be all things to all people. And God actually is all things to all people. See, the Bible's a wonderful book. But so often we use it against people. And so often we use it to justify ourselves. When it, but when it says it's useful for instruction and correction, that means you read it and correct yourself. Let the Almighty God deal with other people. Even those within the church that you don't necessarily get along with. It's kind of hard when you realize God loves them just as much as he loves you. And he wants the best for them just as much as he wants the best for you. And he wants a relationship with them as much as he wants a relationship with you. And maybe we need to be using our scripture to show them one of those 75 names of God that applies to what they need. Maybe you do need that Jehovah Jireh who is the provider. And it may, be, it may provide a sense of peace. God may prevent a sense of purpose. God may provide a sense of you are my child, you are of worth. Any five-year-old that goes to Sunday, or Sunday school or vacation Bible school will get the psalm that says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't know how many times I heard that as a kid. Okay. People need to know that. And I wrote a few down, and I am going to mangle, absolutely mangle uh, uh, pronunciation. I also left my reading glasses at home too. Elohim Makese Lama, God of our refuge. You ever seen a child who gets scared and they go hide behind their mama's leg? I saw a video of a baby elephant that was chasing some geese around at the zoo and he fell down, immediately got up and ran to mama. Okay. Where is that safe place? God can be your safe place, that place of refuge, that place of protection, that place where God is looking out for me because I no longer can look out for myself. You see that term a lot in the psalm. David refers to God, his refuge. A lot. And some people just need that place where they can go and feel safe. In peril through their own stupidity. That's a tough one for us adults to admit. Sometimes we are where we are in the situation we're in because And I don't know what the magic age is where you're not. But at a certain point, 
We got to quit blaming parents. We have to quit blaming society. It's us. We have to decide how we're going to respond. But even in those moments, we still have in God a place of refuge. What about El Nose, the God who forgives? We're all sinners, right? That's what we're told throughout Scripture. But there's so many people, and I imagine we've all met somebody that says, I cannot imagine God being able to forgive me for what I have done. And God's saying, who told you who I can and can't forgive? Who told you what I can and can't forgive? I am a God who forgives. Yes, there's all sorts of places in Scripture where he distributes punishment. But it's kind of funny when, when I was doing John Sunday School and the prophet is saying, I'm pro- proclaiming all this punishment on Edom and uh, all the other enemies of Israel, and then Judah, and then, okay, Israel, here's what's wrong with you, and then that's the most of the book. But at the very end, as is with most prophecies, I will restore you. I'm going to punish you, then there will be forgiveness and restoration. And quite honestly, I firmly believe, in my humble opinion, forgiveness occurred before the punishment. He forgave you, but you know what? you still got to go through punishment. you still got to go through what I'm going to put you through. And then when everything's said and done, I'll restore you back to where you were. And sometimes we as maybe as a church, as we as an individual, maybe in a workplace, we have to go through that downturn so God can bring us back. This may be one of my favorites. Elohim Mikorov comes from a passage in Nehemiah where God says, am I not the God who is near? We sometimes forget the nearness of God. And usually when we go, where is God? If we just turned around, he'd be right there. God is never far. One of the attributes of God is his omnipresence everywhere, all the time. If we can't see God or feel God, we're not looking. And when we feel like we're all alone and nobody No God could care for me if we just turn around. We we have a need for nearness, if you will, intimacy. We need to have a God who ever we need him. And We just, I really don't want anyone wasting time wandering around, where's God, where's God, where's God? Stop, be still. Places of that in Scripture. Be still and know that. Well, not sad. It's sort of silly to say I have some favorite passages because there's so many fantastic passages. It's like there's one, one A, one B, one C, one B. But when you remember when Elijah had that great victory over the uh, prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, and then the queen got mad at him, so he got scared and ran. And he ends up in a cave on Mount Sinai, and I just... Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I think I'll just die. Do you remember what God did? Here's some food. Take a nap. How many preschoolers has that worked for? Well, I'm seeing some shaking. But if you... 
But sometimes, just take a nap and have a little food. Let's think about it. Let's, let's not overreact in the moment. And God reminds him, okay, stupid. That's not a word you're supposed to hear at church, right? But okay, stupid. There are 7,000 other people just like you that have not bowed a knee to that false god. And God made Elijah incredibly aware of his nearness. That he was always there. We sang about God, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. So I won't say, Jehovah Shalom, God our peace. With all the turmoil in the world, and it seems like it's always going, going around somewhere, we think, oh, we're finally over COVID. Well, maybe not. The war in Ukraine making the gas prices go higher or lo- whatever it's doing to the gas prices. And we're worried about this, that, or the other. And God said, just rest in me and let me be your peace. If you can't find your peace, let God be the peace. Because we're told in Scripture, worry is really a lack of faith. We're supposed to be in our trust in God to the point where it the safest place to be, the most peaceful place to be, is in the middle of God's will. And there are people in our lives that need to know that peace. They need to know that God who is the provider. They need to know the God who is our refuge. They need to know that God who is so close to them. They need to know that God who forgives. They need to know all the other names of God or at least the personalities of God that say, this is a God can meet you wherever you are and bring you to that point of how can I live without a relationship with this God? I said the near one was my favorite. It's not second favorite. This is all through Scripture. Abba. What does that mean? It's the same word in a lot of languages. Father. Now the problem is, not everybody's like me that had a wonderful Christian father that imperfect walked in the will of God. So either God can be the father that's the example for your earthly father, or he can be the father that you wish you had. Always the protector, always the teacher, always the comforter, always the discipliner. We don't like that part. Okay. But I don't... I don't know about you, my dad was one of my biggest cheerleaders. Okay. He was not one who outwardly demonstrated emotion and affection. You got him talking about what God did in people's lives that he knew. He'd get teary. I'm going, who is that tough man that raised me? Okay. I'm lucky. Not everybody is so lucky. Because when you have God the Father, also present is God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, you have a very intimate, close relationship, whether it's really spoken or not. And some people need that kind of father. The father that's described in the parable of the lost son. Dad, I want my money now. Okay. Go blow it, come back. I'll be anything, I'll be a slave. And dad welcomes him with, 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 with open arms. Before that, though, he did something very unfatherlike. 
he saw his son coming and he ran to him. You know, we have to understand that God responds to us when we return to him like that kind of father. Welcome back. There is no need for forgiveness. There is no need for for me reminding you how stupid you were. There's no need for me to, to remind you there's no money left for you. You are my son. You are my child. Welcome back. And like I said, there were 75 other names for God that can meet someone's need. So when you have someone in your life that's questioning, I don't know about God, well, what do you think God is? Do you think he's a magic genie, a Santa Claus, a tough drill sergeant? What? Well, I don't know what he is. Well, let me tell you what he is. He's our protector. He's our provider. He's our refuge. He's our peace. He's our forgiveness. He's always near to us. He's our guide. He, he's our father. Whatever you need from God, He is it. There's, there's no, no reason to go anywhere else. We can't really adequately define God. We can't really adequately describe God. But Scripture gives us all these names that describe God as with certain characteristics and certain qualities. And sometimes the people we meet need to hear that. He's not looking for you to do anything wrong. He's looking for you to come to him and say, I need you. He's looking for you to stop being so busy, be still, and just say, okay, God, talk to me. Be near me. when I first started working where I work now. It didn't take me long to figure out who the Christians were. And I'm saying this in front of two students that I see. One I see all the time, the other I don't. And then Emma, who's a graduate. Our head of school is a Christian. My immediate boss prior to this year a Christian. So many of the teachers I sub for when I first started were Christians. Well, how'd you know? Well, I talked to one and she says, you know, I couldn't get through this day teaching these sixth graders if I didn't pray for them first. I said, well, an atheist doesn't say that kind of stuff. Now, as a teacher of sixth graders, I... I, I think God has to be my peace. Because <laughs> some they have no filter. Some of them have no sense of propriety. It's like, God, keep my mouth shut. Because sometimes they, they need harsher words than they deserve, perhaps. But boy, it'd make me feel better. And I pray for them. God, give them discernment. <laughs> give them wisdom. Because I've talked to enough of my kids, I kind of know who the churchgoers are. But I can't preach to them. I can just sort of live it, hopefully, and not mess it up which is kind of what I think every time I come up here. Please, God, don't let me say something stupid. Okay. There is no person on the planet who cannot be met by some aspect of God's character. Maybe they're not ready for deep, in-depth Bible study or something. That sounds terrible to say. Maybe they just need to know the God that they need to know. 
and then let them grow from there. And as a teacher, it makes me glad when I see former children of mine doing well out there in the world, raising families, serving God in many cases. And I go, thank God I didn't mess them up. And God's going, it wasn't up to you. Okay, thank you for the humility lesson. So I have to keep in mind the kids I have now, when they choose God, they'll be all right. They'll be fine. So that's my prayer for them. It's my prayer for you. Sometimes we like to complicate things. And God is way complicated, to be fair. But God can meet us where we are. It can meet us where, well, where we are, and he can take us to where we need to be. There's a song long ago. I know for some of you, this is not that long ago. It was the 80s. For some of you, that's back when dinosaurs were roaming the earth. And, but there was a singer named Steve Green. And his famous song was, People Need the Lord. And if my memory's correct, it said, at the end of broken dreams, he's the open door. I pray this week you show people that door. Say, let me introduce you to the God you need. And if you don't know all the words, it's no shame in Googling it. God as peace, God as refuge, God as strength. God, and it'll tell you. But you don't need to know everything. God knows everything. Say the words you know and encourage them as they Seek, because so many people are seeking. So many, so many. I walked in, Chad said, yeah, there's the man of the hour. I said, 50 minutes tops. I think it's been 20. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for playing so many roles for us that you are not a one-dimensional God. You are not a one-trick pony. You have so many attributes to us that, that we can find what we need no matter what our need is. May we see it for ourselves and may we help those who are struggling find it for themselves. In your name we pray, amen. Have a blessed week. Be safe. Thank you.